interview. This is pretty entertaining. This is an um, interview Elon Musk had with the BBC where he completely eviscerated this BBC reporter. And the funny thing about this is that, if I'm not mistaken, this whole interview, the whole basis of this is to do with the oh the st no the fact that yeah it's to do with the fact that twitter had designated um bbc's account on twitter as government funded because it's in the name right british broadcasting company but for whatever reason i think bbc didn't like the connotations of being government funded they were stick they were kind of arguing against it going going through a back and forth and i guess eventually Elon decided to jump on a Twitter space and have a face-to-face -face interview with BBC representative in this journalist and kind of hash it out and talk about the differences. But I guess the journalist didn't um, didn't kind of account for Elon pushing back ever so slightly. And again, Elon Musk has done a lot of kind of bullshit stuff over the time over the last few months. I feel like, and being a big fan of his, especially being a fan of the kind of stuff that he makes or the companies that he kind of sets up and builds and the things that he's trying to do in terms of technology, in terms of space exploration, in terms of making, you know, us multi-planetary species and whatnot and AI and robots and whatnot. He's got a lot of cool things that you can kind of get behind. And being somebody that kind of got exposed to him via reading that amazing unofficial autobiography by Ashley Vance, which I definitely recommend you pick up. It's available on Audible and whatever kind of platform. I think I listened to it as an audio book, but it's a really good autobiography. Um, it kind of paints him really well. Like it's Maverick kind of genius, kind of inventor guy type of things. He has his flaws in terms of not delivering by deadline, but generally that side of things I love about him. But over the last couple of, you know, maybe 18 months or more, he's really become quite unlikable really really unlikable especially when you think about recently what's been going on with uh, matt taibi and how he essentially used him to be a mouthpiece for twitter and kind of use his credibility as a somewhat neutral journalist to kind of do his dirty work with the twitter files and then when he basically decided he didn't want to change jobs and leave substack and come over to twitter um he decided to now make substack links be kind of you know not enabled or not liked on a twitter platform and all this sort of nonsense just really petty crappy stuff that easily somebody could have kind of you know brought to his attention and really kind of got to the crux of it and actually understood hey what's your motivation behind doing this why would you treat somebody this way why would you do some certain thing when a lot of people you know you think a lot of kind of substack um journalist type of people who write on substack are basically quite active twitters also so to kind of you know take away their ability to kind of share links or whatnot it's just kind of a shit thing to do the bbc journalist did not do that he decided to sit down there and kind of essentially go for some ideological possessed emotional questions regarding hate speech and whatnot which is something that can't be defined it's too flipping vague and emotional and just loosey-goosey to kind of really get down to it and kind of really have a discussion about it and elon pushed back slightly and this guy was fumbling all over the place and it makes you really wonder about these flipping journalists who call themselves journalists or whatever it may be these guys don't have a scooby they're absolute dumb as bricks but here's elon absolutely eviscerating this journalist pretty easily I mean, I would, I would only just add that, you know, we have spoken to people who, who have been sacked that used to be in content moderation. And, and we've spoken to people very recently who were involved in moderation. And they just say they just there's not enough people to police this stuff, particularly around um, particularly around hate speech um, in the company. Do, is that well, what hate you speech are you address? talking about? I mean, you use Twitter. Right. Do you see a rise in hate speech? I mean, I, but just a personal anecdote, like what here do comes, you, here I don't, comes. personally, my uh, for you, I would see I get I get more of that kind of content <laughs> now, personally, but I, I'm not going to talk to talk to the rest of for, for the rest of Twitter. You, you see so this is the easy question to answer, I feel like, because I think most people can agree especially when Elon first took over, that meme of loads of random accounts basically spamming the N-word and not getting banned, that was happening. And I'm also seeing, I feel like, a lot more of these kind of blue check mark type of like bro chatty dog whistle were racist type of accounts the type of ones that always like posting pictures of like switzerland and places where there's not a lot of like immigration or whatnot right these sort of accounts have kind of i feel like blown up and become a lot more prominent online on twitter mostly maybe it's just my feed because i follow maybe a few of these accounts because i just think it's funny when people are like weirdly dog whistly slightly racist like that i just find it super hilarious in a weird way so maybe i'm seeing more of it but that's an easy sort of anecdote you can kind of pull from that definitely is something you see more on social media especially on twitter for sure 
Um, hate speech is kind of hard, like I said, to kind of pin down, but that's an easy anecdote. Yes, you're, you, I feel like are seeing way more kind of like, um, way more stuff that you would put within the kind of, not white nationalist, but you know, maybe that kind of like white pride type of type of thing. It kind of does exist. Um, it kind of is what it is. But yeah, hear, hear, hear how this guy fumbles it. I see more hate speech personally. I would say I would see more hateful content in that. In that content moment. you don't like or, or hateful? What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, just content that will solicit a, a reaction, something that may include something that is <laughs> slightly racist or slightly sexist, those kinds of, those kinds of things. So, so imagine wanting this to be one of your kind of, you know, things that you pull up you kind of pull Elon on and you can't define hate speech. Not define it, you know, in, in kind of absolute terms, but at least your definition for whatever argument you want to put forth. You should have some semblance of where you want to go. But he does as a scoobiest. If anything, this is just all feelings based. He feels like Twitter's a meaner place now. So now, you know, it, it's, it's a cesspool. Everyone should be banned, all this malarkey. What an absolute crazy person. But let's just play it up a little bit more. So you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, no. Is I'm that not, what you're saying? I'm not let's saying go anything. Back again. I think that's awesome. Let's go back again. This, this is that, a, a reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist, those kinds of, those kinds of things. So you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? <laughs> I, no. Is I'm that not, what you're saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm, <laughs> saying, well, I'm just curious. What you, I'm, I'm trying to understand what you mean by hateful con content. And I'm asking for specific <laughs> examples. Um, and if, and you just said that if something is slightly sexist, that's hateful that's content. Crazy. Does that mean that it should be banned? Well, you've asked me, you've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more. It, I'd say it's got slightly more. That's but, why I'm asking for examples. Can, right. you, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I you don't can't name I, a single example. I'll tell you why. Because I don't actually use that for you feed anymore. Because I, I just don't. Oh my God! He mentions the for you tab he sees way more hate speech under the For You tab on Twitter. Then when he's pushed back and grilled and asked to clarify and actually have at least one example, he can't name one example because guess what? He doesn't use Twitter much or he doesn't use the For You tab much. Now, I don't know if he's being facetious and he's doing that thing that people do when they want to seem and appear as if they're like smarter than what they are. Oh, I don't watch TV. I'm not really into that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, you do watch TV. You see clips on, on your flipping phone. That essentially is TV now. Like, stop being dumb, right? So maybe he's kind of being um, pretentious in, on purpose. But this is hilarious. What a hilarious fumble! This is the best that BBC had to provide. You like it? You said actually, a lot of people. A lot of people are quite similar. I, I, I only. Well, a lot, lot of people. Hang on a second. You said you've seen more hateful content. But you can't <laughs> name a single example. Not even one. I'm not sure I used that feed for the last. <laughs> Three or four weeks and I, well I, then I how did you see the hateful content content because i've been i've been using i've been using twitter since you've taken it over for the last six months okay so then you must have at some point seen the, you for your hateful content i'm asking for one example right and, and I, you can't I, give a single I, one and, I, and, I, and i'm saying I, I, then I, I say so that you don't know what you're talking about really. Way. Yeah. <laughs> this reminds me of one of those interviews i've had before where you go have you ever had a job interview where you don't prepare i've had a couple of those maybe because again not to be you know not to take things for granted but there are times where I've been applying for jobs where I've been applying for many places at the same time. Or maybe there's a particular job that's a bit more down the line that I actually want. So maybe I'm at the final stages, but I'm still keeping my kind of eyes open and the door open because I'm one of those people who I never, I never kind of, um, I never take anything for granted until I've kind of signed the papers. And sometimes even until I've, sorry, signed the contract or even until I've started. So I'm always kind of keeping my eye open. So there's a couple of times where I was applying for other places that I'm that further down the line on. And then this other place tells me, hey, come in for an interview. And you just think, fuck it, let me just go and just speak to them. So you just go with a bit of arrogance because you've already got this other thing in the bag that you're kind of confident about. And then you just go in there with no preparation. And you get grilled by a CEO or the manager or whoever's interviewing you. And you feel so ridiculous at the end. You're like, you wasted your, their time, your time. You embarrass yourself and your family. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just leave it thinking, oh my God, what a horror show. And this is what that feels like. No preparation, none whatsoever, zero. Not even anecdotal evidence that you can share and say, oh, my friends, since they've been using Twitter, since you've taken over, um, two of them have lost their lives. Three of them have been admitted to flipping hospital, um, blah, blah, or whatever. Just something. He's got nothing, just feelings. 
just what he feels and what people say to him. Crazy. Because you can't give me a single example of hateful con content, not even one tweet. And yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, that's a false. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, what I claimed was uh, there are many uh, organizations that say that that kind of information is on the rise. Now, whether, whether it has on my feed or example. not. I mean, I, right, and Literally if you look at something one. like the, the uh, Strategic Dialogue uh, Institute in the, in the UK, they will say that. Oh, so my you, God. Look, people will say all sorts of nonsense. I'm literally asking for a right. single example, and you can't name one. Right, and as, as I've already said, I don't use that feed. But let's, well, then how let, would you know? That I don't you, think this is getting anywhere. You anything. literally <laughs> said you experienced more hateful content and then couldn't <laughs> name a single example. Right, and as I said, I, That's haven't, absurd. I, haven't, I haven't actually looked at that feed. I then how would you know this hateful content? <laughs> because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. This reminds me so much of, what's her name? Kathy something, right? Or, or that woman that interviewed Jordan Peterson on Channel 4, right? So what you're saying is, so what you're saying is, absolute horror show absolute horror show i can't give you an exact example let's move on we have we only have a certain amount of time um <laughs> well <laughs> covid misinformation you amazing the COVID, you've changed the covid misinformation has course. bbc changed his covid misinformation <laughs> the bbc does not he's destroying this guy absolutely destroying him not set the rules on twitter so i'm asking you no i'm talking about the bbc's misinformation about covid exactly Look at that. Look at the, the pause is the best bit about this. I've got to rewind this. The pause is the best bit about this. Information about COVID. Let's go back again. Let's go back again. I'm asking you. No, I'm talking about the BBC's most information about COVID. I'm, I'm, I'm literally Has, asking you about, you I'm, changed I'm, I'm, the labels, I'm, I'm, the COVID misinformation <laughs> labels. They used to be a policy and then, then disappeared. Why, why do that? Well, COVID is no longer an issue. Does the BBC uh, hold itself at all responsible for misinformation re regarding ma masking and, and side effects of vaccinations and not reporting on that at all? And what about the fact that the BBC was put under pressure by the British government to change its editorial policy? Are you aware of that? <laughs> this is a, this is not an interview about the BBC. Oh, so. you thought it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and this, I see now why you've done Twitter Spaces. I am not a representative of the BBC's editorial policy. I want to make that clear. Let's oh no, we know that. Don't worry, we know that. You're not representative of yourself. Look at that. Even the posture, even the flipping posture, everything about it is just screaming B E T A male. Look at that. Absolute cretin. And again, I've not been the biggest fan of Elon in the last eighteen months. I feel like you know. He's kind of shown himself up to be a pretty, pretty despicable individual, especially the way he kind of chewed up and spat out for Matt Taibbi. Bless the guy. He probably should have known better. But in general, the guy has been pretty unlikable the last 18 months. There's so many things you could literally pin him to the master about and really kind of get him to kind of speak about in a kind of really open way and maybe get to the bottom of or call him out on certain things. That guy had nothing prepared. Zero. No prep, no nothing. Just vibes. Absolutely crazy absolutely crazy.